Baba Kama, Perak Zayin, Mishnah Beth. Second Mishnah in the seventh chapter of Masechet Baba Kama. We're in the middle of talking about the idea of Tashlume Arba'a Bechamisha, that if a, if a thief, we learn in the Torah, if he steals an animal, okay, and then slaughters it or sells it, if it's a large animal, he has to pay five. If it's a smaller animal, he has to pay four. That's Tashlumi Arba Abba Chamisha. But in order to make a person pay, you have to have witnesses to testify that he both stole the animal and also slaughtered it or sold it. So says the Mishnah. Ganav al If he stole the, uh, the animal, al By the testimony, we established that he stole the animal through the testimony of two people. Vitavachu bachar al And then the te- they, those al their mouths, the same people testified that tavach, he slaughtered it, umachar, ed, but it really means or he sold it. So meaning you have the same witnesses that testified that he, that he sold it or, or slaughtered it. O al machim, or even two other um, witnesses. Mishalin tashlumi arba'a v'chamisha. He has to pay the tashlumi arba'a v'chamisha. I made you a cute little chart, and you'll see a little bit why I made you this chart, okay? So you have Ede Gneva, they testify, he has to pay double, Kefa. Okay, and then you have Ede Devicha and Mechira, two other guys, it could be the same guys, but they look the same. Okay, and then you have to pay three more, and all, this, all together the Ganev has to pay Tashlume Chamisha. We'll see in a second uh, when that, that changes. Ganav Umachar B'Shabbat. If he stole the animal and sold it on Shabbat. Ganav Umachar La'avodah Zarah. If he stole the animal and sold it for the purposes of Avodah Zarah. Ganav v'tavach b'yom kippurim. He stole the animal, and then the, uh, the witnesses say that he slaughtered it on yom kippur. Okay, now slaughtering on yom kippur, zdono karei. The, perp- the punishment is karei. What we're going to try to figure out is: is there what's called kam lebed rabbi? We had that rule that if a person has a punishment, if a person has a punishment that's stringent, that's harsher, then you only get the harsher punishment. So ganav umachar b'shabat. We said we're going to see is, is he has to pay dalit behe. Aval tavach, but if he slaughtered it on Shabbat, shu onesh skila. If a person shechs on Shabbat, he's chayis mechal al Shabbat, and so therefore, since he's mechal al Shabbat, come lay bid a We're going to see that come lay we give to him bid a the more strict punishment, i.e. skila. He's already getting the punishment of being stoned to death, so he doesn't have to pay extra money for slaughtering the animal on on Shabbat. So therefore, uh, if he's machar b'shabbat, he sold it on Shabbat, or machal avodah zarah, he sold it for the purpose of avodah zarah. That's bad, but you, he didn't actually sell, slaughter. Slaughtering for avodah zarah is avodah zarah. That's an act of worship. Ganav v'tavach b'yom kippurim. If he slaughtered on yom kippurim, where the punishment is karet, okay, uh, and there's no the, the, the bartir comes up with a situation where he's not chay of malkor either. Ganav Michel aviv v'tavach umachar. He stole it from his father and he slaughtered it and then his father died. We're going to see what the difference is. Okay, well, see, the meaning is, so he owes his father the Dalit Behe. But, met aviv tava. we're going to see in a few Mishnayot that his father died first and then he slaughtered it. Then we learn that he's patur. Why? Because he inherits the animal that he's slaughtering. We'll see in a little bit. If he saw, stole the animal and slaughtered it and then made it hegdish. In all of those cases, he still has to pay four or five because the slaughtering was a was a shchita ruuya. Okay, it was an appropriate shchita. You know, what you use it for that depends on the other person. Okay, it was a shchita ruuya ve'achak, and then you made a hegdash. You could do that if you want. Ganav v'tavach le'refuah. Let's say you slaughtered it for the pur- for medical purposes. O leklavim or to feed the dogs. Hashochet v'nim sa treifa. You do a normal shchita, and then you find the animals a treifa. It has a blemish, it has a wound, so it's not technically kosher. Hashochet chulin ba'azara. Or if you slaughter the animal as chulin in the Beit Hamikdash, meshalem tashdumi arba avachamisha. In all of those cases, okay, you, you, you still have to pay dalit be according to the Tanakama. Rabbi Shimon poter b'shne elu. Rabbi Shimon is exempt in the last two cases of treifa and chulin ba'azara. Why? He so he holds shchita she'ena ruuya. Lav shchita. It's not me shchita. It's not ruuya because in the end, if it's a treifa, if it's a treifa, you can't eat it. And chulin sheba azara. And if you did chulin in the Beit Hamikdash, it's asur. Okay. But the Tanakhama says yes, it's asur. But there's nothing inherently wrong with the shchita. True, the animal is a, is a treifa. The Tanakhama says, but you didn't do shchita wrong. The animal is not a kosher animal. So the Tanakhama says you should be chayav and dalad vehei. And Rabbi Shimon says if you can't eat it in the end. Then you're not chayav on Dalad If the animal's asur, then you're not going to be chayav on Dalad Behe. All right, we'll stop here. We'll come back to our witnesses in a little bit.
dedicated our learning to remember my father, Harav Simcha, Ben Yitzchak Kalman. Have a good day.